Hi. Today I'd like to draw a connection between fear and abstraction. And I'll tell you why I think that's important. They often work together. Let me explain. Often we're afraid of things, and very often we're not really sure why. Fear becomes kind of the background of our lives and of much of our actions. And one of the ways you can tell that is to ask yourself the question, how many of the problems that I'm facing are really solvable, and how many of them are interesting abstractions? That's important because if you make that observation and conclude that all of the problems in your life are really solvable, and they're at the level of, should I put new tires on the car? Should I renew my subscription to National Geographic? Should I go south for the winter, and, and so forth? Those are all solvable problems, and that probably indicates you're dealing with a little too much fear. On the other hand, if somewhere in your life you have the time to say, what are the interesting problems? What is life all about? What would um, peace look like? Uh, how can we solve the problem of indigenous peoples or of the homeless? Um, or what about the meaning of life and so forth? If you can deal with, expend time with, examine those kind of problems, then you're probably not afraid. Because fear brings in this tendency to, to look in the small dimensions of the things that we can fix soon, so we can be powerful over them. Also, it's important to know that abstraction is frequently a solution to the problem of fear. Because if much of your life and time and, and energy is concerned with those little problems that you actually can fix by examining the larger problems, the unsolvable problems, the more interesting issues in life, it kind of gets the fear to go away. It kind of tells it its place. So have a look at what you're doing. Think about how many problems you're facing that are solvable and how many are interesting. You may be dealing with a little too much fear. Have a look.